what I call the new meaning of mapping. So I'm going to restrict uh, my comments to things that uh, are already shipped and that are in use by more than 100 million people. Okay? So we're talking about uh, past and present, not future tense. Um, the, uh, also, you can learn something about uh, Google. If you do define colon, you'll get a good dictionary entry. The, <clears throat> the way I want to start today is with a, a little test. So I want you to raise your hand. Don't shout out. But just raise your hand if you know the answer to my question. What is that? OK. Most people didn't say it. <laughs> now, <clears throat> now, OK, but most people knew what it was. Now, uh, <clears throat> second question. What does it say? OK, now, for anybody that's watching later on video, not a single person in this uh, illustrious audience seems to have any clue what it says. Now, what's interesting about that is everybody knows that it's one of these most important things, a watershed thing. People flock to London to go to the British Museum to see it, but nobody bothers to know what it actually says. I think it's an interesting thing, and if we're going to be technology leaders, we have to understand the difference between what something is and what it means. So this is an, it's a quote from it, and it, this, is, this is the whole text of it uh, translated uh, into English in this case. Uh, <clears throat> just as an FYI, I translated the whole thing from English into 52 different languages in less than a minute using Google Translate API. But uh, what's interesting about that is it, it starts off basically as kind of like a Silicon Valley CEO intro. It says, uh, the sun god, the ever living, the majestic, the, the you know, it's, uh, <coughs> it's uh, but anyway, it's, uh, it, it, you should read it. It's actually quite fascinating. Uh, when, this, when this guy took power, Ptolemy the Great, he uh, gave, gave a tax reduction and did an economic stimulus package. So, uh, <coughs> Um, what, I, what, what you should learn from this is that, is that, is that what it means is very important. It, in fact, it's, I think it's more important than what it is. And that, 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 that defines me as kind of a dreamer, I guess. But, but uh, William Butler Yates made this point about how can we know the dancer from the dance. And I think that's one of the high standards for technical insight. You know, what is the dance? What is the behavior that the dancer is trying to perform to conform with the dance? You know, what is the routine what is the skater? You know, that, that sort of question. You know, what is a tree? What is a particular tree? So I'm going to ask you some questions today. And I'm going to show you some things. So this is uh, <clears throat> a, a screenshot from Google Earth. It's uh, installed uniquely by more than 600 million people. Uh, this is an idea of being able to go under the surface of the earth, oceans, anywhere in the world, to see true bathymetric data all around the planet. What, why I like that, <clears throat> it's not because it's super important to go under the water. I mean, it's, it's just that it's two-thirds of our planet, and most humans will never go there. They will never see this. They have no chance of seeing it. Now, they could take scuba lessons, but most people don't. Out of six and a half billion people, just a handful of people are going to go swimming in the ocean. It's two-thirds of our planet, but now 600 million people can actually see the planet, and they can get a sense of what's down there, including shipwrecks, different kinds of fish, pelagic animals, and so forth. Another thing I'd like to show you is this notion. This is uh, Florida, where the rockets are launched at Cape Canaveral, and that's what happens after the launch when things go well, is you get things in orbit. These are low Earth orbit satellites. Uh, hundreds of thousands of Earth orbit, low Earth orbit satellites are tracked using KML. It's an international standard uh, market language for 3D browsers. It's supported by, uh, it was sort of a virtual Earth. I haven't tested it in Bing Maps. But uh, Adobe, you know, Adobe Photoshop can read it. Now you can see uh, larger orbit things, elliptic orbit things, and then off in the distance on a, on a diagonal band, geostationary, geosynchronous objects. So, so this is something most of us aren't going to go into outer space and get a sense of what it looks like, right? I mean, we, we admire astronauts for their courage, but what we, what, we, what we really should think is we should covet their, their insight that they got from going there to see it. And that's something that everybody can do now. While Aldrin read out the diminishing altitude, Armstrong guided Eagle lower, struggling to keep from drifting sideways or backwards, lest they risk tipping over at touchdown. Now came an ominous warning from Earth, just 60 seconds of fuel left before they would be forced to abort. Now, only 30 seconds. Finally, a blue light on the instrument panel signaled that one of three metal probes attached to Eagle's landing legs had touched the moon. Eagle settled gently onto the surface, and Armstrong shut down the descent rocket. In Houston, it was 3.17 p.m., Armstrong broadcast a message of triumph to Mission Control. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Now, you know, when I, when, I, when I see that, I feel 
tense. I remember that moment in uh, my childhood that I could be moved by events of the past explored through a map means that a map is something different. And I think it's something we should aspire to. This is places where coalition soldiers died in Iraq and Afghanistan, and uh, each mark represents many, many people. This is places where they grew up and came from. This is Europe as a trail of bodies. And this is North America, defined by bodies. Maps aren't just driving directions. Maps are a way that humans understand their planet. All humans share one planet. That we can create as an industry a way to educate people is very important. It's also important to know local things. I mean, here we are at the hotel. Let's find out about that. Well, we go to San Jose. We go to the Marriott. What's the Marriott about? Well, you can look at the top. It's, it's, its information is verified by the owner. The owners claim that business. We can see all kinds of information. We can go back and get details there. And it's linked to all the websites in the world. This is a distillation of every fact on the web about this place, augmented by the owner of the place. And you can also break down comments by different aspects of the place. I care about the food, the service, I don't know, how friendly the waitresses are, whatever it is, even the history of the building. So, so imagine a world where every single place had a detailed description. You know, instead of a web page, you'd have a place page. And it was something you could contribute to, like the Wikipedia or something. And it would get smarter and smarter and smarter. And the idea of what tool you use to look at that page is, is like a web browser. It doesn't matter so much as that the data is really there. You can understand things. You want to go somewhere, you, oh, that, I'll know it when I see it. It's glass. It's got the angled aluminum work or whatever. So you can understand. You can double-click to fly down the street and warp. You can see things. And more importantly, any markers or pins that are, that are live, you actually see them in the 3D view. And they're, they're real objects. The idea that the virtual and the real are, are fused into one place that you can actually live and have emotional responses to is the kind of mapping I'm talking about. And basically, that is extended beyond what somebody like Google can do or MapTech or you know, NavTech or Teleatlas or whatever. <clears throat> we can actually have, as Blaze was talking about, all the people of the world are the, the natural sensor of this kind of virtual planet. So we need people to take pictures and share them. Here's pictures from Panoramio. I, I, I launched that. I announced that when we... I came here last three years ago. You can browse them. You can see them. You can see people's pictures. It's uh, fascinating that there are 500 billion pictures online in the world, and none of them have faces blurred, and yet some governments are maniacal that we blur out a few hundred thousand pictures of, of low-res people. It's, it's, uh, you know, they're not technologists, obviously. So anyway, this idea of a map <clears throat> as a, a new meaning, as a place browser, that it, in the ultimate condition, if we succeed at it, it means you would actually go places virtually and know them better than you did when you went there on your, on your own. And you should really think about that. Maybe this morning you saw something different about coalition casualties or different about the moon that you, you, know, you haven't been there on your own. You could have gone there. It's possible to build these things. The next thing I want to talk about, and I'll just give a disclaimer, I've never used a pie chart in a presentation in my life until today. Uh, but I do want to explain something to you, and I don't want to give any numbers. It's not important. So... But I will say the, the big wedge is the latest Hitwise estimates of U.S. market share for Google Maps. And then you have the top map company. The next one's uh, you know, MapQuest and then Yahoo and so forth. So what, uh, what's important about that is that every time we get questioned, do you believe these numbers? Our, our executives or myself or whoever, John Henke, will say, well, you know, we don't quite agree with the numbers. You know, and, and, and people say, well, what's wrong with you? Why, why don't you guys agree with anybody else's numbers but your own? And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to announce that for you. So... You'd think I'd be proud of the blue wedge. <clears throat> I'm not, actually. I'm an, I'm an engineer. Here's what I'm proud of. This is the truth. The truth is we're, Google Maps is the number two map provider in the United States. Did you know that? The other guys are smaller, so sorry about that. But the, the biggest one is Google Maps API users that are not counted at all in the other, other numbers by anybody. Okay? I think that's, that's really fascinating. There, there are... 350,000 websites, and not, not that have a little map stuck in it, not that, not that, you know, have a static map or something, but I mean, that are really API-based with a key, that are active, that are used, because we, we track that, that are actually map-based applications for location intelligence. 50,000 of them, the most active cloud computing genre is, is mapping, just as a data point. So, and if you think of it in this sort of populist way, like the... Uh, 
And like a, instead of house representatives, you think of it by, by website, the biggest wedge of all mapping in the world is the, the websites operated and started by people in this room and their peers all around the world. That, that's the number one thing. So I, I think it's great. And the first one was by Paul Rademacher, housingmaps.com. And there's, you know, there's a bunch of them. I, I can't, you know, not, even a Mac can't show them all on the screen. But uh, the most recent one I like is uh, Uncle Sam. It's a, you can track the U.S. census returns day by day. How's your neighborhood doing, turning in their censuses? You know, save the government billions of dollars by just sending your thing in today. It's like an appeal. So, so it's just amazing. There's 350,000 things like that from individual grad student type people to the government itself doing this. And of course, there are hundreds of millions of these kinds of websites, like uh, Grady's website here, where it looks like a website, but you know in your head that if you click on the map, it's live and active. It's not a static picture. Nobody thought that before. They saw a map and they said, I, I perceive your majesty is a nice map, like the National Geographic map. It's, it's pretty, and I look at you. But this is different. This is like, I interact with you. I'm, it's a web browser. It's a, it's a, it's a place browser. It's, it's, it's live. And that, that, that life is very important. Next thing, is to summarize that, is that MAP is an application platform. That's a huge one. Now, it, it can't really be an application platform, and, it, and the applications of importance can't happen unless business, businesses can get engaged. It's very important to do business. We're, we're, we have the luxury at Google of, of doing business to fund our mission, which is to inform the world, sort of friendly, in a friendly basis, but we do some business to make sure we can afford to do that. So that's why we're, go, we're hungry. We can go to fancy rest, we can go to the hotel, we can go to fancy restaurants, other fancy restaurants, but this is where I want to go. This is like my kind of place. Now, you'll notice every label on that map, it just looks like a label. You can do this now in Google Maps. If you just click on it, it pops up all the information about the place. It pops up the place page. It actually is, is a, it's a browser. You know, it's not just looking, it's, it's doing. Well, that's not going to work if we don't have raw data. And so we're pretty aggressive. This is a, a street view car, uh, <clears throat> or a lot of those. This is a video of our driving to date. So it's, it's either one car going really fast or a couple of cars going in parallel. Uh, but it is uh, chronological, so you can, there's a couple of disjoint regions there. So we're driving pretty fast, uh, but even so, there's a lot of roads in the world. So it was one of those things where it's a, it's, it seems crazy to do it, so that's why we said, well, let's, let's, let's get started now because no time to waste. Uh, <clears throat> we also had this notion that there are things you can't buy, there are things you can't drive, there are things you need the basically people of the world to make a map of. Okay, like mapping for the people, by the people, of the people. We have many, many thousands of people making maps of their community. People who say, I don't want to be a third world nation, so to speak. I want, you know, I want maps here, right here. I live here. It matters to me. And so here's some examples. And you can see small villages. And on the left, you can see how things on a more macro scale, people do their cities. They hook up the highways between them. You can see um, this is uh, Vietnam at the top and um, um, Pakistan, I think, on the left, and on the right, it's the Philippines. You can see the road, the water boundaries being corrected. It's like the Wikipedia, but it's a visual understanding of the, the turbulent, uh, frothy part as it settles into, uh, congeals into jello. So when you get done, you get a fabulous map. We have 500 million edits this last year, this way, by real people who want their map to look better. You get 90% of the maps in the world are this map, and they want that map to look right for them. The other thing is there are places you can go where street view guards can't go. Like you can't drive around Stonehenge, you know? You can't drive through Legoland. So we have a little, uh, you know, fiendishness on that too. Let me play a little video for you. It's a little bit loud, so I'm turn it down. But we, we work with cities sometimes that say, will you work with us? You know, can we be partners? We have this little, van, this little uh, trike, it's, it's, it's cute. Pump up the tire, you know? And uh, <clears throat> all we do is we just go, this is the Sydney, Sydney Zoo. So well, let's, let's film the zoo so people that kids that can't come to the zoo can at least see what, what's at the zoo. Those people get blurred out later on. <clears throat> Kangaroos don't get blurred out, although we, did have, we, have, have, we have had some face recognition where animals got blurred out because they look like people to our algorithms. Uh, so I was, I was in Germany uh, giving a keynote at uh, CBIT. I said to the audience, I said, well, this is what your politicians are afraid of right here. This is, this is it. This is the terror. Um, anyway, th this idea of, of people engaging in mapping their planet, of a, of a rich database that is the planet, that's the real problem. I mean. We'll write programs to look at the data later, but I mean, 
is getting that. And then the question is how to make the map become a place of business. Now, Google's doing our part. We're getting as much data as we can possibly get. But there's more to that. And I mean, this is clear to you. If you sell things, there are 17,000 places you could sell them if you want to sell to a big company. There are 25 million places you could sell them if you want to sell to a small company. Now, from a startup standpoint, what do you think? Okay? Now, for example, where's the barber shop going to advertise? Well, he's not going to cut hair. If he's in Texas, he's not going to cut hair for somebody in Virginia. If he says, if you're in the Northwest Dallas area, come see me. I'll do a good job for you. Well, then he, what he needs is a polygon on a map. That's what he needs. Right? A lot of service area businesses, they need to be on a map. Now, we're not very good at that yet, so I'm not claiming anything. I'm just saying that that makes sense to me. <clears throat> what needs to also happen, we need to move from basically lack of information to information. We're doing that to actionable information. So you click on, the, for example, on a mobile phone, you click on the, the restaurant, then you click on open table, and then you make a reservation. You actually do something. You go to Amazon, you actually buy something. You go to eBay, you actually bid on something. You don't want to just look at it for sure. Okay. Now, what's the meaning of map? Let's see if you remember this. One, it's a place browser. Does that make sense? It's not like a map. It, it, you, can, you can live the place better than you knew. It's an application platform. More than a quarter million companies depend on that. And it's a place of business where you can actually do things. What I think it'll be in the future, I said I would talk about release things only, but let me just hint this. One, it's a social hub. Obviously, wait, wait for, for uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook to really make, make this work for them, but uh, you've seen things with, with social hubs and place coming together. There's just conversations about that here at, at, at this show. The next thing is it's a mobile application. It's going to be a mobile application, I believe, I, I assert. So just to be clear, up in the right is the wonderful iPhone. Uh, the iPhone is a great product. It has more installed bases of Google Earth. You know, more people use Google Earth on the iPhone than on the Mac. So think about that. That's going to be true for every internet application two years from now. People that use computers will be a sort of uh, anachronistic uh, memory. People that use phones will be the modern thing the applications are built for. That's why Eric Schmidt said mobile first. And with that, I thank you for your time.